Hi, Stephen from Owner Disown. So I went out and bought a HP Omen 15. It's the new model. And, uh, you know, I quite like the previous model, but I wasn't a great fan of the, you know, the, uh, the lid. And as you can see here, the new lid is much, much more cleaner. You know, gone are the, the red X here. Gone is the, the red emblem here. It's more pale. You know, it's just, you know, it's translucent really. So it's perfectly fine. You have the omen engraved here at the back, but it fits into more, you know, environments. So this is just the first look. It comes in a, a plain box like this, and so nothing really special about the box or anything. So I don't want to show taking that out. The power supply is actually quite small. It's actually 200 watts. So this has got the uh, i9-9880H uh, CPU 8 core there, and a 2080 Max-Q. So I do wonder, you know, will it be powerful enough for that? And it's certainly pretty small and light. Uh, you do get uh, the usual quick start guides showing you what the ports and everything are and like so the warranty information they've got three different uh, models you know if you look at the website it says look at the family and you've got the uh, the 15 inch with the six inch screen um, which you can look at uh, like I said it's the second screen so you can put a map down there from your game and uh, twitch feed or whatever you want to put on there and uh, strangely Enough. In fact, you know, all pretty, that's pretty similar to this regular 15, apart from that screen. Of course, it does seemingly have liquid metal on it. And uh, I did ask HP whether the regular 15 inch has liquid metal. They said it doesn't. But can they be trusted? I don't know, because I also asked, do the regular 15 have G-Sync panel? And she said, no, but it does. So, you know, take what they say with a grain of salt, really. So I don't sure whether the my 15 has a liquid metal on it or not. But either way... Um, they all have pretty much similar configurations. You can start off with a 6-core 9758 CPU. Uh, the one with the 6-inch screen you know, starts with a 2070 Max-Q, goes up to 2080 Max-Q, whilst uh, my model you can have with a 1660 Ti up to the 2080 Max-Q, as can the 17-inch model. Now, interestingly, pricing-wise, the uh, i7 9750H model on the one with the... Uh, the the screen in it uh, that uh, retails for about eighteen hundred and fifty dollars versus my model here um, with a twenty seventy max Q and an i seven would be nineteen hundred and thirty dollars. So it's a little bit, you know, a little bit cheaper here. But if you go to the twenty eighty max Q, you know, it reverses totally. So if you've got the i nine and the twenty eighty max Q, you're looking at three thousand one hundred and fifty dollars for the one with the little screen in it, or my model, which costs around about two thousand three hundred dollars, and that's a huge. A huge savings so that's why i plumped for this one you know i wanted to see you know how it would get on i wanted to sell my clevo and perhaps my triton 500 and just have one laptop now i've had a i've been playing around with it for quite a while and um, and i do like the aesthetics of it you know the the keyboard deck you know it's fairly firm it's all fairly plain you don't have a red omen written up at the top uh also this is not red it's just you know gray so it's more subtle doesn't sort of glare at you gamer which i do prefer there's no big ridge at the back it's very nicely set uh, you do have uh, the uh, omen control center button here to open that you do have a separate number pad separate good 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 controls and you can also in the bios um, have uh, the fn keys for fn and f key or just single press to alter the uh, volume brightness that type of thing the trackpad it's actually an elan trackpad but it's smooth it's nice it does seem to be made of plastic but you do have separate um, buttons here which i do like and uh, you know responsiveness is very good so the key lighting on the omen is actually in four zones you've got the left side middle and the number pad and the awsd keys are the separate uh, zone you can configure them of course different colors but no patterns the triton 500 is actually in three zones and you can actually configure it to flash and do various patterns as well. And it is brighter on the Triton 500 for sure. Around the back, we just have the air vents. Now, unlike the previous version, where they had ports at the back, there's nothing here. Now, you do have the word Omen etched at the back, which is a nice little touch. So, here on the right-hand side, you have an SD card reader, which, you know, put an SD card in, it goes in all the way, I like that. USB 3.1 Type-A and the air vent for the uh, GPU. Now most of the ports are on the left hand side and right at the back you have the uh, DC in, you have gigabit ethernet, HMI 2.0, two USB 3.1 type A ports 
mini display port and a USB-C Thunderbolt port there for the combo headphone mic jack. Now the side bezels are pretty thin, a little bit thicker at the top than I perhaps would like, but you do have the webcam up top, which is nice. Now with the hinge, hinges being down here rather than at the side, there's a fair bit of flex here in the screen. I would rather the hinges were here. So you gotta make sure you know you hold it by the by the center here rather than at the sides. But the screen itself, the hinges there, I mean sorry, are are fairly fairly stiff. So comparing the screens between the Omen 15 on the left and the Trine 500 there on the right, certainly the uh, Omen is much more bright and it, uh, the colours therefore are certainly more vivid than the Triton 500. And the weight is five pounds, five ounces and with a power brick, six pounds, 12 ounces. So the back cover of the Omen 15 feels like it's made of aluminum, pretty solid. Some good air venting here and you see the speaker grills here, Phillips head screws to remove it. Inside we have the 69 watt hour battery. We have a space for a two and a half inch drive, either you know a SATA SSD or spinning hard drive. There's the speakers. We have a 9560 Wi-Fi card, and we have the uh, one M.2 NVMe drive here. And it comes with two sticks of eight gigabytes of RAM, but you can configure it as you wish, of course. Now you do have some quite big fans. That's great, good. And you've got the the GPU here, the CPU here. So two shared heat pipes and uh, some separate ones here for the, the GPU. And uh, heat sinks, you've got one, two, three. Now one thing to bear in mind, under here is a, a ribbon cable which activates the uh, your need for the RGB keyboard. Now mine, I think when they put the battery in, had dislodged a little clip and it uh, deactivated it. So if yours doesn't work, that's what the cause is. And a quick look at the software you have in the command center. You have the usual, you know, metrics, temperature, uh, utilizations, that type of thing. Um, you've got the uh, network booster, if you want to prioritize certain things. Of course, you've got the lighting control, have it static or off in the in the four different zones. Uh, you've got performance. Now, you do have comfort, which will obviously to help it run cool and the, the lowest clock speeds default. And you've got performance. Performance will dynamically alter the CPU and GPU clock speeds depending on what is required. Now a new thing they've got here is fan control, auto or max. That's a new update they've just recently launched which is good. So let's fire up A to 64 stress test on the CPU. Of course we've got eight cores here you can show there. At default clocking around about 4300 megahertz which is nice. So let's start the CPU stress test. One thing you'll notice, let's have a look at the power. CPU package power starting off at 70, uh, 80 watts there. This is a max fan here. So after about three minutes, it settles around about 2,900 megahertz on all, all eight cores. Temperatures, you know, this is a max fan, about 60, 65 degrees, and about 45 watts. So let's throw in times by. All right, so after running Time Spy and Ada64, the CPU was running about 2,900 on all eight cores. And, uh, you know, looking again, 60 to 60, 65 degrees Celsius and about 45 watts. So that's not too bad, but it, of course, it is power throttling. So what I suggest you do an undervolt, I've got like 135 millivolt undervolt going on here. So let's run the same test again and see what we are at then. All right, so with the undervolt, we average about 3,300 megahertz. Temperature still, you know, pretty good. Did we maxed out at about 80 degrees, 65, 67 degrees Celsius running at. And of course the power, about 45 watts. So that's not too bad at all. So the time spy score by itself, Good score, 7,820. That's a graphics score of 7,597, and a CPU of 9,387. Very good. But it's multi-threaded tests, such as the Cinebench R20 here, where the eight-core CPU will stand out. And this is with the, the six-core 8750H in the Triton 500 with turbo mode. 
So you can see how much quicker having those extra two cores is. So before the uh, command center update, I was able to uh, lock in 3.9 gigahertz on the eight, all, all eight cores using throttle stop. Unfortunately now, it uh, throttles down to 45 watts and about 3,200 megahertz, which I can't seem to avoid. But I get a score of about 3,600 in the Cinebench R20 versus the uh, 8750H of about 2,300. So still a benefit there. But uh, either way, if you've got uh, plenty of uh, um, you know, multi-core applications, you're probably going to see a benefit over like the six-core CPU without a doubt. Even even though there may well be uh, you know some C, uh, you know um, uh, clock speed disadvantages here. Uh, in terms of the battery life, you know again, there's no there's G-Sync on here. It runs on a dedicated GPU all the time. So at first I got one hour fifty minutes. Then I tinkered around with it with an undervolt, got up to two hours twenty six. Um, that's a twenty percent brightness there. I might be able to sneak it down a little bit with extra power saving options in there and get it to just over, over two and a half hours. So it's not that long. So that uh, is obviously bear, a bit disappointing. And bear that in mind, of course, if you're a road traveller. And uh, but you know it's fairly quiet. You now do have that fan control, which obviously does jack up the fan quite a bit. But at idle, it's perfectly fine. It does get a little bit warm underneath because, of course, it's using a dedicated GPU all the time. Uh, but uh, all in all, I do quite like it. Now, would I consider it better than my Triton 500? I'm not sure because I quite like the fact that's got a MUX switch and I can uh, swap between the Intel GPU and the 2080 uh, Max-Q, you know. So I, I do like having that flexibility. But the screen on this, of course, was nice and bright. It's much more vivid than my Triton 500. So... I'll have to do some more gaming tests and see what uh, you know the outcome will be. Anyway, if you uh, you know put in the description below some tests and things you'd like me to do for the full review. Uh, thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.